In this video, I'll come clean and tell you about the upcoming Fanatic opaque paints from the Army Painter that I've been using for the last few months. In September of last year, 2022, the folks over at the Army Painter put out a video on their YouTube channel, and the video was called We Hear You, at which, you know, the title piqued my interest. I watched it and the gist of it is this, right? Their opaque paint line called War Paints and available in nearly every hobby store out there wasn't as good as they wanted it to be. They had a bunch of video snippets from a bunch of different online creators and each of these creators kind of shared their frustrations in different videos and stuff on their own channels and whatever with the Army Painter War Paints. And i would be honest, I've had similar frustrations myself. I've been using Army Painter products for years and I, I loved the, you know, wide range of colors in the War Paints line because I don't like mixing paint. It's not laziness, honestly. It's, it's really not. It's because I paint mostly for tabletop, for, for gaming, right? And if I start work on an army or some kind of force or whatever, and they have a specific color scheme, and then I need to add more units or figures to that force, I don't know, maybe weeks or months or years later, I don't want to go back into my notes on my phone and see that the highlights on those models were done with the, well, you know, like some of this and a little bit of that or whatever, two parts this, one part that. And I just want to know that it's cadre gray. But beyond the wide color spectrum available, there was little else that was like amazing with the War Paints line. The line uh, has been around for like 15 years at this point and they worked out okay. The paints were sometimes a bit too runny or other colors were maybe a little bit too thick. It sort of depended. They had a tendency to separate on the wet palette kind of pretty quickly. I mean, all, all paints will separate on your wet palette eventually unless they dry out first, right? But these were pretty quick to separate. They worked, but they weren't great paints. You know what I mean? And this was weird because all the newer stuff that they've been producing in the last several years was really, really good. When they released their air paint line of airbrush paints, that's what they're called, air paints, uh, I tried them out and was blown away by how good they are. And I've talked about them a bunch of times here before on the channel, and I've talked about them, you know, in streams on Twitch and stuff like that. They're pretty much all I put through my airbrush anymore, right? That's, that's the only paint. I used to use a lot of different air paints and stuff like that and try to thin things down. It's all air paints now, right? There's no need to thin them. You just use them straight out of the bottle, which is awesome. They've never clogged my airbrushes, right? And, and they come in these kind of great kind of matching, they call them triads of colors. So you always know what color, you know, to highlight and to shade with. And you don't end up shifting the hue of your, of your chosen color. This is important. If you use a very, like, yellow green as the base color and then you use more of a blue green for the mid it can kind of look weird but if you use a blue green and a blue green just different values you know darker lighter even lighter still or whatever that makes things a lot easier and these match triads they help you do that also the speed paints are amazing as well i really liked the original ones you know and the newer 2.0, you know, versions and the expanded color ranges when they launch 2.0 have become the only ones that I use, especially after I finally cleared that hurdle of how to use them in dropper bottles. I used to use contrast paints from GW because I could just, you know, dip my brush into the pot and then paint it straight onto the model. But when I started using speed paints, which are in dropper bottles, and then putting those into a fidget popper for like a little kind of reservoir palette thing, it was a game changer. Pachow. And since then, I've honestly put away all of my GW contrast paints in little pots. All that is to say, when the Army Painter came out and said that they wanted to update the formulation for their main opaque paint line and try to make it like, you know, the best in the world, according to them, it seemed like a pretty big deal to me and a high cliff to climb. If they could pull this off and make like a spectacular line of opaque paints that is consistent and also covers well and is also a dream to work with and still, you know, has their like really wide variety of different colors to choose from for a non-mixer like myself, I would definitely want to get my hands on it and try it out. And then I did. 
About two and a half months ago, I got a, a kind of heavy box delivered to my house. And it was uh, prototype bottles of the new opaque paints from the Army Painter. Initially, I thought that they were just going to be sending me like a few colors to try out from the new line. But instead, they sent 162 different colors in 27 different color families, the little boxes there, uh, groups of six. And I'll get to that later. And these were the new Fanatic paints, which they've since announced on their, you know, YouTube and all that kind of stuff and been talking about it online and everything like that. Well, I opened that box and took out the packing stuff and everything. And uh, I took a look at the paints and I, I dug right in. Now, these didn't just show up randomly or unsolicited, of course. I've been in communication with the folks from the Army Painter for years, and they've sent me stuff in the past to check out. However, this time, they had reached out about this new update to their opaque paints, and they wanted me to try them out and give them feedback. They're always very receptive to working with wargaming content creators. I know some other folks got a box like this, too. My good friend Sam Lenz, for example. Being prototype models, they came with just simple black and white, you know, labels in, and they were, those were packed in these handwritten boxes with each of the color families, you know, put on there. Uh, these new paints aren't in like three color triads like the air paints, but more in six color groups, which are all basically the same hue, but in six different values from lightest to darkest. Amongst the six different bottles per family, like this actually gives you four triads per family, right? Like if you've got one through six, as far as bottles, you get a triad one, two, three. You also get two, three, four. You get three, four, five, you know, et cetera. So you end up with four different types of triads within six different bottles, which gives you just a ton of choice when trying to pick your colors, but still stay within the same hue. As I shook them, there was the familiar rattle of like included mixing balls, which is becoming more standard among the better paint brands, it seems. And I, I think it should be uh, standard. As I squirted out my first blob onto my wet palette, just right from the get, I was amazed at how smooth and creamy the paint was. Just even from the act of applying it to the wet palette from the little dropper bottle, I could tell that it was already markedly different than the old war paints. I was very used to the way the old war paints would come out after shaking them and everything. And this is very different. Creamy is the word I keep going back to, it seems. And that's, I think, a very good thing. Fluid and easy to move around the model, but not too thin or thick. That first color I tried out also covered really, really well. I, I picked up an old Space Marine model that I had laying around on my hobby desk for testing paints and such and whatnot, and it was primed black. I put uh, this, this turquoise layer, uh, you know, the first one I squirted out, I, I, I put it on the leg. I, I painted it on the leg, and it covered almost completely in one coat. Not every color in these new Fanatic paints can completely cover black primer in a single coat. If they all could, then I feel like the paint line would be probably too thick across the board, which could cause troubles. But the coverage is really, really good on every one of these that I've used, still yet smooth and creamy. According to the videos that the Army Painter has recently put out on their YouTube channel, uh, this amazing coverage for the Fanatic paints is due to the fact that they now have, according to them, three to seven times the amount of pigment, depending on the specific color, uh, than the old war paints did. Like the, the Fanatic paints, three to seven times more pigment, depending on color, than the old war paints. That seems, honestly, very believable. As I said, the coverage is very, very good. However, from what uh, I know of paints, uh, Adding that much more pigment is kind of like adding more and more and more dirt to water. The mud will get thicker and thicker until you can kind of like make bricks with it, right? You know, so like with this much pigment, how is this stuff so creamy? It turns out that the Army Painter has invented new stabilizers for the Fanatic line that allow paints with this much pigment in there, you know, to still be very creamy and smooth. It's, it's all very scientific, and I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not a paint chemist, but like working with these paints is kind of a dream because they don't have all that extra fluid in the bottle when you first open them that you're supposed to squirt out. Some people, you know, refer to that as ketchup water. If you know, you know, and, and that was very difficult with the old war paints. They also don't separate quickly on my wet palette like the old paints. And, well, honestly, many others do from other manufacturers as well. Uh, they easily last for most of the paint sessions when I'm on Twitch for three hours at a time. 
and they only really start to kind of change a little bit towards the end of those three hours. Now, that said, I recently found a spot on a figure, just the tip of a missile on one of my mechs, uh, that I had missed when painting it the day previously. And instead of having to like get out that same color and put some on the wet palette, I was just able to open up my wet palette and grab some of the same color from the previous night. It was still good enough in the center of the blob and touch up the stuff I missed. When paints separate a whole bunch, you generally can't do that. Even, as I said, I don't mix paints much. These colors really do mix great with each other as I've, you know, gone through and experimented and tried out mixing stuff on my wet palette, you know, for science. Um, they also take medium really well. If you want to try to like thin them down a bunch and glaze with them and such like that, I, they don't seem to split and break like some paints can when you keep adding, you know, more and more medium. I honestly haven't found any problems with them. And the range of colors is super extensive as, I, as well. Like I said, I got uh, 162 colors, which included skin tones, but it didn't include any of the new metallics that will be in the new uh, Fanatic line or any of the new washes and technical paints. So I can't really speak to those yet. When the Fanatic line launches, they're saying there's going to be a total, including metallics and washes and, you know, some technical paints and stuff like that, 216 different uh, paints, which is pretty amazing. And I'm really looking forward to it. I've been using these new Army Painter Fanatic paints on everything I've been painting over the last two months. These great freelancer industrial mechs from Steel Rift, and then, uh, you know, my Imperial Guard Combat Patrol that I've been working on, among others. Even when I've had to, like, keep it a secret and not show the paints that I'm using and stuff like that as I paint the Imperial Guard on Twitch, I was still painting with them. I was just keeping them out of the camera's eye, you know? In my opinion, they're superb opaque paints, smooth and creamy, as I've said many times, with like dense pigment coverage and with a near perfect variety of colors. And the color families are an amazing tool for beginner painters and veterans. I can't wait until these fanatic paints hit the hobby market at the beginning of 2024, and you'll be able to try them yourselves and, and see what you think. I think that you'll be very much impressed with the new colors. From what I've seen, they'll be available in like a bunch of different sort of set boxes, kind of like they do with their other paints and things like that. And then eventually they'll be available in single bottles probably sometime after that. Are you looking forward to trying out the new Fanatic paints? Uh, do you have any other questions about the new paints? Put them down in the comments below. I'll see what I can answer and stuff like that. If you liked this video and this type of content, please hit the little like doohickey. It really helps and it might make fireworks or potentially little tiny uh, confetti. Again, I'm still not 100% sure. What do you think? Uh, also, subscribe to see more, and uh, thanks for watching.